Hey friends, it is Lisa Mason Ziegler because it's Wednesday and it's Ask a Flower Farmer. And i um, so glad to be here with you guys today. If you haven't noticed, I'm on the farm, as you can see from the wall built behind me. And um, so if you've never joined me here for Ask a Flower Farmer, what this is all about is answering your questions about growing cut flowers, whether it's seed starting, harvesting, conditioning, cool flowers, um, whatever you got, flower farming business, farm dogs even. Um, today is the day to ask the question. And this week, I'm also going to say, if you have questions about my course, y'all, the 12th hour is here. You need to ask me the questions. Enrollment closes tonight at 12 midnight Eastern time um, to my course. And if you are on the fence, let me answer your question. That'll get you off the fence. Um, and if you are, let's see, if you're a wannabe or a budding or flower, you want to be a flower farmer, or maybe you're somebody that's been doing it for a couple of three years, um, but you just, you aren't, it is not going as smooth as you quite had thought it might. Um, you need to hit the reset button. I would love for you to join with me. Oh, I have some folks on here that have signed up. Congratulations and welcome to Flower Farming School. School doesn't officially um, start until November 1st, I think it is. And I am going to go through, I see that somebody has a course question, um, but let me finish saying this. If you have questions, I see the one about the course question. I'm going to catch that one. But if you have questions, be sure to post it down in the bubble with the question mark. That way I don't lose the questions and everybody's name spiraling through, right? Um, so we have so many people signed up and I am so totally stoked and excited. All right, so I saw the question. Wait a minute, let me get back to it. Hello, flower friends. And so many people signed up. All right, course question. How long do the classes last daily, certain times, etc.? What a great question. So all of the course is recorded, pre-recorded. So there is no designated time that you have to show up and do things. So here in a nutshell is how it works. On November 1st, which I believe is a Tuesday, Tuesday morning at 8 a.m., when you log in to your online library, which is what you get when you purchase the course, you get you set up your username and password, you log in, all of a sudden there's going to be a bunch of videos in there and information. And then you can watch, though, there's multiple sessions. I mean, each week started out being like three to four hours of a lot of little sessions that make up that much, but there's actually more than that now that there's bonuses, but you can watch them at your pace. Um, and then, so though you get those on that first Monday, then the next, I'm sorry, Tuesday, the next week on that day, guess what? You get another load. That happens every week for six weeks until your library is slam packed full of content. Now, here's what I recommend people do, um, because here's the reality. We know as a fact that people spend, watch the courses more after school than they do during school because this is what happens. There is so much information and we tend to focus on the stuff that's hot on our plate at that minute, meaning if you have some specific issue, like maybe it's cool flowers, right? Um, that's where you're going to go in and spend your time because you can't possibly learn that much stuff in one week. So here's what I recommend that people do, is to skim those videos, see the subject matters that really are pertinent to you right now, and then you have the rest of time, because you have access to the course forever, to go back in and revisit stuff that maybe you don't need to know right now, or to do it later once winter has come and flower farmers are hibernating, right? So there is no specific time limit. There's no limit because you have unlimited access to the course. So I hope that answers your questions. And so you can watch it at any time. Um, there is a phone app that comes with the course and um, you just download it on your phone. And what a lot of people do, while you cannot download 
the content because we have no way of controlling our property that way. You have to have internet access or cell access. A lot of people listen to the courses in their cars while they're doing errands, um, so you can do that also. So that's just a great time to actually be able to re-listen or to listen for the very first time. Um, so I hope that answers your question. And I can almost promise you I'm going to go back live again probably later this evening since enrollment closes tonight. If it's either today, y'all, or you have to wait till next year in October um, or in the fall, typically, um, to be able to enroll. And, you know, I'm saying if you're on the fence, take the jump. Um, and there are so many of our students out there sharing their um, experiences and, you know, reach out to anybody. And reach out to us. I also recommend that I did an Instagram live a couple of days ago. I went through the entire course syllabus, like giving you the backdoor information. So check that out too if you are still on there. So let's see what questions we... Sun, Sunflower Sky Farm. How do you kindly handle all of the requests by customers, etc.? to want to visit the farm when you aren't set up for that and don't really want to venture into that? That is an excellent question because I am a professional at doing this. Because I'm in the middle of the city, that is the number one headache I had back in the beginning before I just kind of figured it out. Um, so letting people come to your farm, first off, is incredibly liable. I mean, you are totally liable. Um, if, if you're if you're running a business on that property, um, that means it's all of a sudden a very different game than if it was just your home, right? So our standards, Suzanne, what did we used to say to people? What we would say back before we would have, so here's, I'm going to tell you what we do now and then I'll think back while Suzanne is thinking. Um, what we do now on my farm is once a year, one day in the middle of the summer when it's usually before the weeds get out of control, but everything's blooming beautiful. We have an open farm for four hours. And so that allows me to say to anybody that says, oh, I want to come visit your farm, say, oh, great. We normally have an open farm midsummer, And if you want to know about that, sign up for my newsletter and that'll keep you in the loop. End of discussion. No, there is no really other time. You know, I mean, people, most people don't really push that hard beyond you saying that. But if you don't even want to do that, I would just say, oh, I'm so sorry. We are not staffed nor set up for people to come and visit our farm. You know, you don't need to say to people, you know, I'm not protected. Um, you know, you have to have insurance to let people come onto your farm. If somebody comes onto your farm looking at your gardens and you're selling flowers from that garden, all of a sudden the game changes. Let's just say one of your friends um, or visitor breaks their leg because they tripped over an irrigation. Well, really that's their fault, but that doesn't matter. When they go to the hospital to have that leg fixed, they're going to get a little questionnaire to fill out and says, how did it happen? And they're going to say, I was visiting a flower farm. And then that's when the insurance is going to say, oh, we're going to sue those people to get our money back because we're paying for your leg. That's literally how it works, y'all. And I got this firsthand from insurance agents. So you can't do it. So that just puts you in a whole different frame of mind. But don't feel like you have to explain all that to people. All you have to say is, oh my goodness, we would love to have people over, but we are not staffed nor equipped, nor do we have parking um, for people to come and visit. End of discussion, right? You know what I mean? Try to just move on to another subject and see if that doesn't help you. But that was one of the most difficult things that I had to figure out um, when... Um, I mean, literally people ride past my house, y'all. I mean, we, we can tell the people that are stalking, we call them, um, that are going super slow and, and they're looking in because I'm in the middle of the city. So I understand their desire, but it's not as simple as it appears to everybody else. So hope that helps. Flower Chaser, will there be any live interaction communication with you during the course? Oh my goodness, yes. Another great question. So there's six weeks of content that's dripped out to you, right? At the end of each week, so it would be on Monday nights at seven, at 8 p.m. Eastern time, we do a live Zoom call. And you will have been asked to submit questions as they 
come to you, um, and we show you where to submit all of those. And because then the girls actually, the day of um, the Q&A, they build a little PowerPoint um, slideshow based on that. So we actually cut off bringing questions in. I think it's like 12 o'clock. The date would be like Sunday at 12 um, to be included in that. But I normally will take live questions on the Q&As if time allows. The best case scenario for several reasons, um, but one of them is you want your question to be included in that PowerPoint because that PowerPoint Q&A is then time stamped. That means that you can go back and reference in that Q&A so easily instead of just having to watch the whole thing. So every week I answer all the questions. Um, Q&As usually last anywhere from one to two hours. Um, it is recorded and then put into your library. And as I said, it is time stamped to help you to be able to go back and find your question or um, to look and find something else. Um, so good question, Flower Chase. And um, one of the things that we really feel like we have built our course um, library around is, is for our big schools is the interaction between the instructors and the students. Um, all of our instructors who are other flower farmers with huge servant teacher hearts, um, that's their desire too. We wanna mentor people to go beyond what we are and you do that through Q and A's, right? Um, so we have those in addition to that. We offer a closed private optional Facebook group. There's one group that you would go through school, your school class with. Then after that is done, you can then elect to join in my alumni group. And those are previous students from all my previous years. Um, and that is an amazing, supportive, helpful, and knowledgeable group of people um, that can do that. So there's a lot of interaction. Um, and I'm in and out of the Facebook groups but that weekly Q&A gets all your questions answered. I live in 6B. It went from six, 75 degrees at night to 40 at night. Frost in a week to two weeks. Is it too late to plant cool flowers? What a great question. And I will tell you all now, we still have not planted our cool flowers. I mean, with the hurricane just blowing through here, it just skimmed us. We just got some rain and wind. Um, we haven't planted either. So I understand. If you look at your next two-week forecast, maybe it's not so horrible. We get warm again, but it's still not too late. The temperature dropping really affects direct seeding more than anything else. You are, if you want to direct seed anything outside, they definitely need some heat. So hooping and covering with the lightweight row cover, not plastic, this is lightweight ag cloth, um, will help block the wind and concentrate the heat and buy you a few weeks back. Um, but transplants, you can definitely plant, get them started, um, because as long as your ground is not frozen, you can still plant. Hoops and row covers will just buy you time. It is not too late. I have been known, um, as long as your ground's not frozen and you've got a prepared spot, you can pretty much still plant cool flower transplants. All right, Carla, will the sod knife cut through the bottom of a zinnia stalk to clean out a garden bed? Um, it will, but that would be a lot of work. And I tell you what we do is we use a big pair of, we're getting ready to do this because we're pulling, we have crops that need to be gotten out of our no-till beds and we don't want to disrupt all of the, um, mulch. I mean, the beds are in such great shape, right? They have no weeds. They're mulched. You know, the crops have grown beautifully. So what we're doing is taking a big pair of loppers. So you don't have to bend over as much, right? They have, those are long handled, not a hedge cutter, a lopper, the ones that have scissor cutting blades on it. And we're just cutting those zinnia stalks or celosia. Um, Bobo will be doing a lot of that in the next couple of weeks, and that way you don't disturb the soil. Um, the side knife, I think, would take too much energy, back and forth, back and forth. It probably would, but I think that a lopper might be an easier way to do that, if that makes sense to you. All right, Florabelle Farm says, should I be worried, never, never worry, just do something about your problem and move on that my fall planted cool flowers are budding up, frost in the next two weeks. 
I would almost promise you if it's budding up, I bet it's Sweet William. It always does that. Um, and I would just, really depends on how big your plants are. I mean, your plants, if you planted too early, sometimes that can happen, or if the plants got stressed, um, and then there's certain varieties or certain families like Sweet William, especially Amazon, um, that'll bud up early. Don't worry about it is what I'm going to say. Just leave it alone. Don't pinch it because you just don't need to. Just leave it be and go on and don't worry about it. If you pinch it, that encourages more sprouts and you don't want that to happen now. Morning. Could you go over bed prep? Do you cut the stems from the roots or pull the whole plant? Then add compost and use the Bio 360. I'm mostly interested in how you get rid of the flowers. Cut at the base or pull out. Cultivating the heart, it totally 100% depends on um, the, what style of farming you're doing. I do both. I have no-till beds and conventional beds. Conventional beds get bush hogged and tilled under, whole nine yards. Then we build beds um, and put Bio 360 down. Getting ready to do that. And in the no-till beds, as I was just previously um, suggesting, using lot if your beds are in good shape, not weedy, it's nicely mulched as ours are, we are just cutting those summer annual crops right at ground level, lopping them off so we can then plant our crops on top of that. Those things are going to winter kill. I mean, they're annuals, right? Warm season annuals. Um, so that's what we would do. Do you leave the roots of zinnias, suns, cosmos in the ground, or do you dig them? Um, so I think I just actually, I don't, would never dig them. I would never dig anything up. But if you have a garden that is small enough that you're not using equipment, cutting them off at ground level. Um, but it all depends on the state of your bed. Our beds are well prepared. They've already had compost added to them this year. They're mulched and they're beautiful. So we just cut the stalks of the old crops and plant the new crops on top of that. If you need to put compost or fertilizer and all those things in, then you might as well just pull them out. I mean, get rid of the whole plant, put it in your compost heap, and then prepare your bed as I recommend, um, which you can see that I think in Cool Flowers and Vegetables Love Flowers. Um, here, wait a minute, let me close that. I don't know why that didn't come up before. Let's see, my fall planted Campanula is amazing and my customers are obsessed with it. I get 10 to 15 stems per plant. What can I expect on an early spring planting? Worried about sparse short stems? Would love it again in the season. So I'm not sure I understand when you planted that. You're saying it's blooming now. Um, and many of my fall planted Campanula is amazing and my customers are obsessed. So I'm not sure if you're saying it bloomed last, you planted it last fall and it's still blooming now. Um, we plant Campanula in the fall for the very reason that you are um, suggesting also that very early spring planting and spring planting can produce pretty short stems. Our um, and I only grow one variety of Campanula. It's Champion, and that's because it's not a true biennial. Most, many Campanulas, I should say, many Campanulas um, are biennials, meaning they need to be gotten into the ground er much earlier than now to get the proper size, to go through winter, to get the cold treatment that they need to bloom next year. So often people are planting other varieties of Campanula, other than Champion, which is what I recommend in the book Cool Flowers. Champion goes from seed to bloom in 16 weeks if you can, I mean, like in a, in a greenhouse situation. But that means it doesn't need that cold treatment, right? So um, we fall plant Champion, which we got plugs and we're getting ready to put those in, and they'll bloom next summer, maybe like probably late May, um, mid May. Um, I have never very early spring planted, but once, and yes, I got short stems, but you need to be ensure that you're planting champion. Um, so if you plant champion now, then you'll have spring blooms. So that's what I would recommend. All right, so I answered all those questions. Let me go back here through. So I want to say again, if you're just joining us, um, so my course, Flower Farming School Online, the basics annual crops, marketing, and more. Um, 
It opens for enrollment once a year for five days. Today is day five, closing tonight. And so if you um, want more information on that, it's in my profile. The first, if you follow the link in my profile, the very first um, option is to go learn more about the course. Um, and one of the great tools that we have added to Flower Farm and School last year um, is the Cool Flowers Field Growers Report. I always have to stop and think about the name of it. It is an interactive tool where you can put in your experience with a specific cool flower um, and for your zone and what you did and whether it was a success, success or a fail. And then you have access, you have direct access to that database so you can see your immediate response posted to that as well as everybody else's. And you can search by your zone, by the flower. There are so many options. So when you sign up for Flower Farm in School, and this is only available for my students, I mean, it's part of my course at this point, when you sign up, you know, school doesn't really start till November 1st, but you get immediate access um, to the field growers report. And you can enter and learn about, you know, because there's so many cool flowers that weren't featured in Cool Flowers, the book. So this is a way that people are just putting in information and sharing and learning what other flowers they can actually grow. So you get immediate access to that um, and so I'm just trying to think, y'all, this over on that course page, the sales page it's called, um, you can download my syllabus. It tells you what the six weeks are. Um, and friends, I will tell you, we it, my course has actually kind of grown out of control because I've added so many bonuses and bits and pieces and like the cool flower thing. Um, I mean, my course, I would gander to say is, I mean, it started out at like 18 or 19 hours of content. Um, now it is much more than that. And so in addition to you getting your Q&A for your class recorded and added to the library, you have access to all the previous year's Q&As. And I tell you something that um, I hear frequently from students is that's one of the things that they listen to going down the road on their phone app is to listen to the previous year's Q and A's. There are so many great questions, y'all, and to hear even more information is just so very, very helpful. All right, so got a couple more questions that just came. Would you mind reminding me what seeds you soak prior to direct seeding? Um, so, bells of Ireland is the only one that's really coming to mind. Um, bells of Ireland. Direct part of the problem with seed sprouting, whether it's outdoors in the garden or inside, is you have to keep that husk of a seed hydrated, but not rot, soaked, um, so that the little sprout can push through it. And Bells of Ireland is notoriously um, like a little hard rock. It's really hard. You have to really be a good waterer with direct seeding to really get it to break and pop through. So by... Um, soaking the seed before you plant it, you soften that shell. I mean, think about a chicken getting out of an egg, right? He has that little beak that they can peck their way out of. Well, your little seedling doesn't have, your little sprout doesn't have that. So by softening that shell, that's what it's all about. And the real problem that people have, especially starting seeds indoors, they either keep it too wet or not wet enough. And um, so by soaking Bells of Ireland, because we direct seed it, that's how we 100% have great success with germinating out in the garden when they're soaked. Um, that just helps it to go along. So how much does your course go into selling flowers? I had a pretty successful first year growing, but other than the occasional farmer's market, I struggle with selling them. There is a whole week's classes on selling the flowers. Um, that is my true gift. I love selling stuff, y'all. Um, that's why I'm here, right? I mean, because you don't have to be a salesperson. You just have to be confident and know what you're supposed to know and deliver what you need to deliver. And it just makes the rest of it so very simple. But we go over um, several different outlets. Um, by uh, no stretch of the imagination do I exhaust all of them. But anything that I don't cover in that week's courses that you have questions about, that's what the Q&A is for. You would ask that question. But I think it's week three is called Selling What You Grow. Um, and I am a huge believer in being a professional 
and being prepared. And it is so simple and easy. Y'all see, I was a business person before I was a flower farmer. And the way you present yourself, I mean, makes all the difference in the world, the way your first contact goes. Um, and so, yeah. Um, why is this not charging? I don't think that outlet works. Here. Y'all stand by. My phone's trying to die. I thought I was plugged in, but apparently, there we go. Apparently, the outlet I was plugged into doesn't work. I did not know that. Um, so, yes, the course goes into selling. And thank you for asking that question. Um, and that's one thing I want to say about that we feel like because we do do the live Q and A's that we try to, I mean, our goal is to answer every single question. That way, if there is some nugget that you were just so hoping to get the answer to that's not covered in the course, that's how you get that done. Not to mention the alumni Facebook group that goes on forever. I mean, I'm answering questions to people that were in my first class in 2018. We still have contact. Now, I'm not in there nearly as often as I am when I'm in a fresh class um, for that particular group of students. Um, but yes, getting your questions answered is, um, and if for some reason you don't get your question answered, all you have to do is reach out to the office, email and say, hey, I have this question and nobody's answered it, and they'll be sure that it gets answered. That's our goal. But stuff falls through the cracks, y'all. There is no question about that. But we will take care of it. Hey, Wanda, when I was a teacher, I wanted to be the best teacher I could be, so I constantly took classes to learn more. Why shouldn't flower farmers do the same? Invest in yourself. And then I'm going to tell you what, what Wanda's going to say in a minute. And remember, it's tax deductible, the expense. <laughs> Wanda is one of our students, but she's also become a good friend. She is an Alaskan peony grower. And she, as she says, she was a, she's a retired teacher now, but she always chimes in on my lives to remind us, particularly all the new people, that this is a business expense, friends. Um, so keep that in mind and so true about investing. I am constantly learning and doing stuff and buying books and investing in courses. And I mean, everything changes, right? So thank you, Wanda, for that. All right, if you are a home gardener thinking about becoming a flower farmer, do you recommend doing some of your on-demand courses? That is 100% up to you. I will tell you that um, other the first week of flower farming school, the first week is about all the business stuff. We do the stuff, we eat the ugly frog first, y'all. That's the problem that most people just really struggle with is the business side. I mean, sales tax, business license, insurance, all that kind of mess and organizing your day and your life. Because, you know, friends, before you can pick up a new habit or tasks, you have to lay something else down. And I just share with you how I go about doing that. Anyway, the first week is all about that. Other than that, the whole rest of the course is about building beds, low maintenance, weed prevention, what to grow, how to grow it, how to harvest it, and selling it. Um, so we have, what I'm trying to say is we have a lot of avid gardeners that take my course, um, that don't ever end up selling. They want to grow flowers, whether it's for, you know, church flowers or for charity. We have a lot of charity growers, um, people that share flowers with people. And so that is an option, but you can also take the easy cut flower garden, which is about a 90 minute course or, um, and the Seed Starting Made Easy, which is seed starting, those two courses um, would kind of be the forerunner of flower farming school. The Easy Cut Flower Garden um, is just about a three by 10 cutting garden. If you've not grown cut flowers before, that might be an excellent opportunity for you. Um, but you are very welcome in flower farming school. We have a lot of people that do not do this with the intention of building a business. You know, they just want to grow great flowers, and that it will also do that for you. All right. All right, so here's about the companion. Sorry, no fall planted, early summer harvest. So you can plant champion campanula now in the fall to get spring blooms, if that's what we're asking here. 
Can you pinch snaps in the fall a week or a week after planting them out in the field or wait till spring? So that's a really great question. So funny, we were just taking pictures of, of pinched snaps here. Um, so my recommendation is one of two things to either pinch. We pinch because we grow in soil blocks. We pinch in the tray and then we wait to delay, delay planting a couple of weeks to let the plants get over it. Pensions a stress, plantings a stress, winters a stress. You don't want to pile stresses on, right? So if you've already planted and they're not too tall, I mean, if they're 18 inches tall, then you need to do something because the winter whipping wind will do something about that. But if they're small plants and you just planted them, I would wait until they start showing signs of growth in very early spring for pinching. Um, because first off, you don't want to kill them, right? So um, we pinch our fall planted snaps in the tray before they get planted. So they're already regrowing and sprouting. Um, and that works really, really, really well. But I've never done that in a um, plug tray, only in soil blocks. Cultivating the heart. Is bush hogging like mowing? We'll have to Google this. Yes. Bush hogging, and y'all, there is such a great video in Flower Farm and School. I have to say to people, hold on to your hats when you see what I do with a bush hog. Um, but yes, a bush hog is a big cutter. That's what you see them cutting the interstates with, you know, on the side of the road, those big bush hogs. Um, so it's just a giant mower. So yes, that's what that is. Which snap varieties do you sow as cool flowers? All of them are cool flowers. They're all cool season hardy annuals. I'm growing this year, I think, nine Nine different varieties, maybe, something like that. So yeah, they're all cool flowers. All right, friends, it's after one o'clock, so I am going to wrap it up. Um, sorry, y'all, I'm just looking to see. Sunny's Flower Farm, can you take two courses at once? I'm interested in the wedding flowers course as well. You know what? That is a really great question because we had that question last year because um, Jenny and my, Jenny Love's course, Farmer Florist School, runs at the same time mine does. And for sure you can because again, you don't, you have unlimited access forever. You can watch whatever you want. I'm telling you what, so if you would want, if you're thinking about doing that, and I will tell you that Jenny Love's course Farmer Florist School is not about design at all. It is 100% the business behind it. Pricing, contracts, what to grow, what you shouldn't grow, what you should be buying from other farmers. I mean, it is the most informative business class and has excellent marketing in it. What I would suggest to you if you're going to do both of our classes at the same time is that you skim. You can watch the videos and fast. I mean, that you can set the speed to go super fast. So if there's a certain area that you're like, gosh, I really think I might have questions about that, go in and watch those. Watch them on high speed. You can still understand. It just goes quicker. And then you can ask a Q&A. But I want to say to you again, even if you have a question six months from now or a year from now, you have the option through the ongoing optional private Facebook groups to ask those questions. So, so we have a lot of people that have taken both of our courses at the same time. So yes, go for it. If that's what you wanna do, people do it. And you, so how do you sign up and what is the cost? Flower Farming School is $595 or two payments of $317. And I can tell you, hands down, you will save that much by avoided mistakes, and you can make that much in two weekends at a farmer's market or two subscriptions. That's the way I evaluate every business expense, y'all. How can I regain that money? What will it take me to recoup that money, right? Um, so you can go to my profile, follow that link that's right there, or you can just go to thegardenersworkshop.com. It's right there on the homepage. Um, and registration closes this evening, 12 midnight Eastern time. Um, and we would love to have you join with us. And any of my students that are on here, um, sorry, y'all, I'm trying to scroll through and it's, I'm waving at people. I don't mind waving at you, but that wasn't what I was trying to do. I was just looking for more questions. All right, friends, I'm getting off here. I'm heading to the warehouse, um, the fulfillment center and how about this behind me? What do y'all think? You want to learn more about this? You'll have to kind of like hang out with me. 
Um, visit, you know, we have a live on Friday inside the Gardener's Workshop phone app, and I'll be telling you a little bit about it then. Um, but yeah, join me there, and you can find all of that information over at the Gardener's Workshop. Dot com and friends, I just really hope that I see you in Flower Farming School. Ciao.